Hi, we're in central Oakland with Nathan Hart. Nathan, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Cool. So tell me about yourself. Tell me, you know, what brought you here to um, to Pittsburgh? Sure. Uh, well, I was not born here. I'm an implant. Um, mm -hmm. And I was an implant back when uh, being an implant was pretty rare. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, lived, in, lived in Wisconsin, lived in Iowa for a while. Uh, applied to Carnegie Mellon when I was in high school, mm -hmm. um, and they accepted me. Got in. So, um, in 1992, yeah. uh, packed up my stuff and moved to Pittsburgh. And um, went through the Carnegie Mellon's five-year degree program for architecture. Yeah. Um, graduated in 97. By that time, I had already had a job wow. uh, in Lawrenceville with yeah. a company called Desmonen Associates. Yeah. Um, Worked there for about 10 years. Um, in the meantime, I bought a house um, in Oakland. I started renting, actually. Um, when I was in college, um, I didn't even really know or appreciate Oakland. Yeah. Um, I was at Carnegie Mellon, which is technically in Oakland, but yeah. um, more, I think, related to Squirrel Hill in a lot of ways. Yeah. I uh, lived on campus, lived in Squirrel Hill. Um, it's like its own little country, almost. It it's is like kind so, of its own little yeah. country. Yeah, it's, but, it's, but uh, beautiful campus, but... Yeah. Uh, um, after college, um, graduated, um, had some housemates. We looked at a couple houses in some different areas, and Oakland yeah. seemed like the best choice for us. So we uh, rented a house on Parkview Avenue. Um, lo and behold, the landlord didn't turn out to be quite what we were hoping for. Okay. The house next door came up for sale. Wait, what do you mean, um, by, what do you mean by not quite what you were hoping for? Well, he, he believed that tenants should fix their own things. Oh, yeah. it's like uh, he was like not even a landlord. He's like I'm he, I'm cool with the landlord part of collecting right, money. Right, right. That I'm fine with. Absolutely. Pay me every month, but when it comes to keeping up the property, right, you guys can do that. We also happened to have a housemate that we found through what was the equivalent of Craigslist at that point. What was the, what was what was the equivalent? Of um, it was uh, CMU Misc Market. Oh, okay, um, it's still around. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Well, in any case, um, she turned out to be a deadbeat. So, oh. we were trying not to cover rent for her while we were negotiating. Yes. Um, so it was it was a problem. All that is, it was mm. it was an eye opening experience right out of college. So, yeah. the house next door came up for sale. Um, we looked at that versus the situation we were in. Mm. I said, I want to buy this house. So I bought the house. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a fixer upper, shall we say? But yeah. I fixed it up. And lo and behold, a few years later, another house came up for sale down the street. Um, bought that one, and my roots started growing deeper and deeper into the so you, community. You have multiple houses. I have multiple. Want... Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. A lot of a lot of people in Oakland do. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I'm a small. I have a small real estate portfolio right. on the street. Um, I like to buy them, fix them up, um, charge below market rent to choose my own neighbors. Yeah. And I think that any of my tenants will tell me I'm about as responsive as they come. Okay. So, um, in any case, that's that's one one piece of my <laughs> of my experience in Oakland. Yeah. Um, also, back in it was probably about 2003, 2002, mm -hmm. um, my neighbors and I got together and looked at how we could protect our neighborhood from some of the, the real influx of some of the absentee landlords that were coming in, right. buying up single family houses, converting them to student rentals it's and really that sort of thing. It's really the problem here. I mean, it's, it's, a big, it's a big problem. People attribute the problems to students, but it's, it's I mean, it is sort of students, but it's really land, like landlords who are not uh, controlling the students. I mean. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So... Um, one thing we did was we looked at a number of uh, different things, and one way that we thought our particular neighborhood around Oakland Square, around Parkview Avenue, um, could have some protection is through the designation of a local historic district. Yes. So we got a lot of petition, or we got a petition around, uh, got eventually about 50% of the owners of record of all the properties to sign on. Yeah. Um, went through a, about a year-long, fairly arduous city process, and eventually got our community designated as a historic district. And it should be. It's super historic. It's, this, yeah, absolutely. Oakland is, is, you know, soaked in history and culture. Ab absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the core of that historic district was built in 1889. Uh -huh. So um, while some of the houses have been altered significantly over time, mm -hmm. the thing that really won over the city was that um, all the houses that were built um, back then are still standing and there are right. about, about 70 of them yeah. that were in that core development. Yeah. So, you know, phenomenal, 
phenomenal way to help. architecture. A lot of them are uh, painted very bright colors too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which is you know something I guess you would see a long time ago, and, and it stands out. Absolutely. Yeah. And there really are sort of waves or periods of different immigrants or different people that came in to, to settle at different times. So. Yeah. It's interesting from a historical standpoint as well to look at the phases that Oakland has gone through. Yeah. And really, I would say the student phase has only been in the past 20, 30 years. Right. Um, probably starting around the time of Litchfield when he was looking at really expanding the university, making it um, not just a private university, but incorporating you know public funds and trying yeah. to... Public-assisted university, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So... So, um, you know, looking forward, looking into the future, um, we see a time where uh, the, you know, the next phase of, of Oakland becomes a time where we have more home ownership again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's much more of a healthy mix mm-hmm. of rental and mm-hmm. home ownership, uh, encouraging the student rental to come more towards the core, mm-hmm. where they want to be um, in a denser, more responsibly um, well-run a uh, mix of university housing as well as private housing, yeah. um, allowing the areas of single-family housing in South Oakland and West Oakland, um, in parts of Central Oakland, um, that are more appropriate for homeownership to be reverted back to, um, you know, an area where you've got a majority of homeowners, um, you know, working with the university to try to. Um, encourage uh, employees Mm -hmm. of the universities or the hospitals to settle here. They've got an easy commute to work. There's so many, yeah, hospitals and and things like Mm -hmm. that and um, that bring in people, professionals, and uh, keep the economy really going here. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, but tell Uh, me about, this is sort of bringing us towards your your, uh, uh, position Mm-hmm. In, in your community involvement with uh, another organization that you, you were involved with? Absolutely. Um, so when I settled here, um, I think Carnegie Mellon gave me a good base of interest in urban development, urban design, um, community activism, and all I needed was a little nudge in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So I had a neighbor down the street um, who has since moved on, but... Uh, she and her um, late husband had been very involved in the community, mm-hmm. and she nudged me towards the Oakland Community Council. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started going to those meetings, um, mm-hmm. found myself secretary, mm-hmm. then vice president, mm-hmm. and then president. Mm-hmm. And um, then as that went along, um, mm-hmm. Oakland Planning and Development Corporation, uh, which is very active and very instrumental in, in uh, quality of life in, in Oakland, um, they looked at me and said, you know, would you like to be on our board? And I yeah. said, oh, I'll take a look. So yeah. uh, I took a look and found myself very interested in that. So yeah. I have been on the board for about 10 years. Uh-huh. And um, I am currently serving as president of the Bo- of Oakland Planning and Development Corporation. Yeah, not board. just on the board, but you're you're the president. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But so you're the, like, you're like the Barack Obama <laughs> of, of the Oakland, yeah. Uh, maybe. But yeah, no, well, it's, <laughs> I guess but it's, it's too, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and that's that's something that, you know, not everybody can say. It's true, yeah. yeah. And uh, what do you see for the future of Oakland? Well, again, um, Oakland Planning and Development Corporation, or Corporation just put out a um, about a two-year study uh-huh. um, that they've just published called The Future of Oakland, or the, sorry, Oakland 2025. Oh, okay. And I don't know if, I don't know if you've heard anything about that from anybody else, but um, it is a comprehensive uh, study that mm-hmm. looks particularly at the residential sector, okay. um, but it identifies areas which uh, we need to encourage more homeownership. Uh, it, in, it looks at areas in terms of transportation. Um, how do we optimize anything from bike routes to um, bus rapid transit, mm-hmm. uh, that sort of thing. Um, it has a number of recommendations in terms of other infrastructure improvements. Um, mm-hmm. Right down here at the corner of Bates and the Boulevard um, is a good example. Um, also, some of the other gateways, um, there's a, a development proposed at the Western Portal, huh. uh, which we've been involved with, which um, you know, we hope uh, the developer and the community um, can find a win-win solution for, for both of them. Yeah. Um, and the plan also looks at, um, as I mentioned before, 
uh, the possibility of uh, more employees of Pitt, of UPMC, of Carnegie Mellon uh, settling in the area. Um, we feel that it's certainly in everybody's best interest, certainly the community's best interest, um, I think the institution's best interest. Um, they'll have employees which are, uh, it's easier for them to get to work, they'll be happier, uh, less absenteeism, um, and they'll mo be more likely to stay at their employer if they're, you know, happier getting there. Yeah, so, and happier living absolutely. In, in Oakland, which is an easy place to be happy. Absolutely. Yeah. And it also helps the city. Uh, yeah. It increases the tax base. It, it um, and from a community standpoint, it increases the number of stakeholders uh -huh. in the community. When you have a street that has nobody but renters, uh -huh. um, people are much less likely to take an ownership position. And on feel pr respect and pride in their ex property. Exactly. Yeah. And in, in that way, you know, if everybody's a renter, um, it's, there's a tendency for crime to go up because people don't necessarily report the crimes that are happening. Um, if you're invested on the street, if you own the house, um, anything that happens has a direct influence on your, um, on your street. On your street, not only your quality of life, but the uh, value of your property. Mm. So there's a strong incentive uh, when you're a homeowner to become a stakeholder, mm. to speak up when some there's when there's a problem. So, mm. you know, we very much want uh, you know an increase in homeownership. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you. Okay, good cool. to talk to you. This has been Central Oakland.